Sometimes winter in Cache Valley in Utah, it, just in general, can be kind of long and, and uh, tiresome. But it's really, it's really nice when you have some flowers blooming inside. Enjoy those in January and February. And if you want to do that with tulips and say daffodils and hyacinths, you want to start those right away so you can you can have those prepared and ready to bloom come the the first of, of next year. So. If you're forcing bulbs inside, basically what we're doing, well, the term forcing is kind of an, an odd term because we're, we're not really forcing them to do anything that they wouldn't do naturally. We're, we're actually tricking them into thinking that winter has come and gone and it's time to bloom. So we're going we're gonna to really trick these bulbs into thinking it's time to bloom inside when it really isn't. They should be you know, preparing themselves for still for winter and to, to bloom later on. But uh, the, the best way to be successful when forcing bulbs or tricking bulbs is to start with the right kind of bulbs. Some just, just bloom better indoors than others. Here's a couple varieties of tulips that work really well. Now there's, there's a lot of different styles of tulips. There's uh, single late, there's Darwin hybrids, there's triumphs, there's Gragey, there's all kinds of different tulips. Usually the ones that force best are the ones that are called triumph or single early. And usually on the box, especially the ones that, that we carry here at Anderson's, uh, it's gonna tell you this is a single early tulip and it also has a tag on there that says, you know, suitable for indoor forcing. You want to look for bulbs that have either a tag on them that says these are good for forcing or look for single earlies or triumph tulips because those are going to be your best forcing bulbs when it comes to tulips. You know, for daffodils and hyacinths, those will bloom really well indoors also. The daffodils, you want to stick with your miniature daffodils. So any that are going to be 10 inches tall or shorter and those will also have tags on them like right there that says, you know, suitable for indoor forcing. So I like to force course, the miniature daffodils, those seem to, to work the best. The larger, you know, full cup daffodils, just they, they don't do well in a, in a small pot. But uh, hyacinths, pretty much all your hyacinths will force really well. This is a really gorgeous color, real deep, deep, dark purple. But you can pretty much do any of the hyacinths and they'll do just fine. So really when you're selecting your bulbs, make sure you can get the biggest, best quality bulbs. And the bulbs that come from Holland are always going to be your best bulbs but then look for uh, a tag on the box or a tag on the bag that says these are good for forcing. Otherwise, they might not force quite as well as you'd like them to. So uh, after you select your, your bulbs, and you can do a mixture of different colors. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You want a good, a, a good sturdy pot to grow them in. I like a seven to an eight inch pot. This is a seven and a half inch pot. And uh, I like to force the bulbs in a plastic pot. They're much less expensive. These are, you know, they'll run anywhere between 30 and 50 cents for a seven to an eight inch pot and it's just plastic and if we drop it on the floor or you know something happens to it during the forcing process we don't have to worry about it breaking if it breaks we can stick it in another pot it's really not a problem but if you're trying to force bulbs in one of your your precious ceramic pots or you know a pot that was left to you by one of your you know by your grandmother and it gets broken in the process then that wouldn't be so great you know it'd be heartbroken but if something happens to one of these pots we don't worry about it you can take this pot later and you can stick it into your nicer pots or your or a basket or you know, anything to make it look a little bit more attractive. So we're just going to force them in here and then we can put them in a, a much more attractive, more decorative pot later on, not worry about damaging our nice pot. Usually have a little piece of, uh, of uh, paper towel or a napkin or something to go down on the bottom. We, we want pots that have drainage, so they've got to have, they've got to have good, good holes on the bottom of the pot so we get good drainage out of the pot. We'll put the paper down on the bottom so that the soil doesn't, doesn't fall out. And then make sure that you use a, a really high quality potting mix. Our ultimate potting mix from Fertilome is probably one of the best soils that we've ever used. It doesn't have a lot of bark and filler in there. It's, it's all peat moss, perlite, vermiculite, and a little bit of humate. And uh, this, is what it, this is what it looks like. It's just a, a real nice, light, fluffy soil. And it's very clean and, uh, and easy to work with. Holds moisture very nicely, but it doesn't clump up too much because of the perlite and the vermiculite in there keeps it from clumping. So make sure you use a, a very high quality potting mix. You'll be much more successful that way. So you're going to take your soil and you're going to fill it up so that uh, it's about three quarters of the way full. So I'll just like fill it up that way. 
What we really want is when we put the bulbs in there and we add some more soil, we want the, the tips of the bulbs to be just barely, barely below the surface of, of the soil. So I'll usually fill it up about three quarters of the way. I'll pick out some tulips. And like I said, make sure you get the best quality bulbs you can find. And a seven and a half inch pot, about five bulbs is, is perfect to fit in there. You don't want them to touch each other, but they can be pretty close together just so they're not touching. And that's what they're gonna look like right there. So we're just gonna set those in there. Don't wanna grind them down into the soil. We really want the, the root area to be as, as little disturbed as possible. So we don't wanna damage that, that root area. So just kinda set them in there and uh, space them out properly so that they're you know, not quite touching but uh, they can be really close together just so they're not quite touching. And then we'll cover them up with a little bit of soil. Now as you cover them up with the soil, like I said, you want the tips of the soil, uh, the tips of the bulbs to be just barely below the surface of the soil. So I'm gonna fill this up fairly full because as I water it, it's going to settle a little bit. And even if it settles and reveals the tips of the bulbs just a little bit, that's okay. Um, usually in that process, that works, that works just fine. I like them to still be just barely covered up. So I put just a little bit of extra soil in as I water. If it reveals the tips of the bulbs, I'll put just a little bit more soil in there. So they're just you know quarter of an inch below the surface of the soil once that soil really gets hydrated. So fill those pots up with soil. We're gonna water them thoroughly. Make sure the water drains down through and uh, you can use a little saucer in the bottom to collect the water, but don't let them stand in the water. So if you put, if you put them in the saucer, all the excess water collects down the bottom, then uh, make sure and take that excess water and discard that so that the, the, the pot's not standing in water because it'll draw that water back up in there and too much moisture in the soil will be a problem. But we want the soil to be nice and damp. Then once you get it, once you get it watered, it's ready to go. We need to put it in a cold storage location for about 12 to 14 weeks. So cold storage means as cold as you can get it without it freezing. So we need somewhere between 35 and um, maybe on, on the high end, 45 at, at the maximum. We want it to stay in that nice cool temperature. So you can, you can do that in a refrigerator. If you've got an extra refrigerator in the garage that you keep you know, soda in or, or, or whatever, we need that temperature to stay consistent between 35 and, and say 45 degrees for 12 to 14 weeks. So inside a refrigerator works great. A lot of times you can do it in uh, your, your cellar, your cold storage area, in the crawl space of the house, and you can even do them right outside. We've dug trenches out in the garden, put the bulbs, put the pots of the bulbs down in the bottom of the trench, covered it up with mulch, and uh, you know that, that's when you gotta wait till it gets a little bit cooler outside where the soil will stay consistently that temperature. But usually towards the end of October through November, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good way to do it. You can mulch those, plant, uh, those, those planters, those pots, and uh, protect those, and then uh, set your timer, or write it on the calendar, give yourself uh, 12 to 14 weeks, and after that much storage time, the bulbs will have started to sprout. They will have developed a root system. There'll be a little sprout sticking up out of the top of the pot. They'll be, you know, two or three inches tall. And that's when you know they're ready to go and you've got those, those big buds coming out of the bulbs. Take it, put it in a a uh, cooler location in the house, maybe somewhere between 60 and 65 degrees would be perfect for the first week or two, just so they can kind of acclimatize themselves to their new location. Then once they really get going and they're just about ready to bloom, that takes about two weeks, maybe three weeks. Then you're gonna move them to a warmer, real sunny location so that uh, they can bloom and you can enjoy those. But uh, you always wanna have them in a little cooler location in your house because uh, They'll just, they'll just fade really quickly. So we want those bulbs to last, those flowers to last as long as possible. So in a cooler location, they're gonna last a lot better. So when you first pull them out of cold storage, they need a, a brightly lit location, but much cooler so they can make that transition. Then you can move them to a little bit warmer location, but still lots of light to really encourage good blooming. And then uh, you'll be able to enjoy those blossoms throughout the winter time. So very easy to force your bulbs. You just need a pot, you need a great location, you need some good soil and some bulbs that are gonna force well for you and you should be successful even on your first try.